All right, now the Baltic Dry Index is down about 35% in the past 10 weeks, but still has more than tripled year to date. So, what does this mean for the global economic recovery? Has it stalled out? Is it still going strong? For more insight on the BDI and what it means to the world, uh, to Asia, and the shipping business, we bring in John Wobensmith. He is Chief Financial Officer at Genco Shipping and Trading. John, thanks for joining us today. Thank Let's you. talk first about the BDI because so much was made of the drop in the Baltic Dry Index uh, a couple weeks ago that you would have thought the bottom had fallen out of the global recovery. But you say that's not the case. No, it's it's absolutely not the case. I mean, what tends to happen is that first of all, the BDI is a snapshot on any any given day of the week. And any given day of the week, you have the supply ships that are available to move the cargo that needs to be moved. And those things change from time to time. Um, what you don't have is a steady. Um, shipping of cargo. China tends to buy and then pull back, buy and then pull back, and that's mm -hmm. why you see the volatility. This is still in the a fairly dramatic three year chart. I mean, you can see that we hit some sincere highs, I'm assuming, at the top of 2000, in the middle of 2007. Uh, do we recover to that point, or do you think that was just la la land? And overdone, yeah. Well, I wouldn't say it was la la land. I mean, there obviously was demand for the goods at the time. The question is, do we get a recovery um, that brings us back up to that? And I think it will be a little slower. What we have been seeing and what has really forced the recovery in the BDI is China. And record number of, uh, of iron ore shipments have been moved over the last six months. Steel production now, you're seeing record numbers. And all of, this, all of that is on the back of the Chinese infrastructure and the stimulus package that they've put together. Well, what kind of supply are you seeing or demand are you seeing at this point? Um, actually, fairly positive. I mean, if you look at just what on does a, fairly positive mean? Well, especially I mean, we're, in this environment, we're, we're in in the middle of August, which is traditionally a slow period of time for the shipping industry, mm -hmm. and yet we still have fairly decent cape size rates at forty-seven, forty-eight thousand dollars a day. Um, we are still seeing way spot, down, though, way down from what we saw. Absolutely, way down, and a lot of that is because Japan and Europe have not come back from being off twenty-five to thirty percent. We have just started to see increased cargo movements of coal, in particular, going into uh, into Japan. Well, and how much capacity was added? I mean, if you look back at that three-year chart. At the top, I'm sure a lot of people thought we need to make more boats and get into this business, right? Right. right. Well, if you if you look at what's always uh, created issues for the shipping industry, it's always been overbuilding. In this case, it's interesting. I mean, there definitely has been a lot of ordering, but what we're seeing now is a lot of cancellations because of lack of financing and lack of funding from banks. Mm -hmm. We're seeing owners go to shipyards and push the orders out a year or even two years. So if you look at what was actually scheduled to be delivered in the first half of this year. You've only had about 30 or 40 percent of, of what was scheduled to be delivered actually delivered. As far as new boats? As far as new ships. And going into 2010 and 2011, you still only have about half of that order book that actually has bank financing behind it. And we all know what's going on in the bank markets today. That, that money is just not there. John, based on what you're seeing in terms of demand, and we've spent a lot kind of talking about a reality check today in terms of what's been going on sure. in the markets and what's really going on fundamentally, where would you say we are in this economic cycle? Have we turned the corner? I, I think that the drive bulk industry has turned the corner. It's a little more difficult to say where all economic demand has yet, but what has, again, what has really made the dry bulk industry um, come off of those lows is all the spending that's been going on in China. The stimulus spending. The stimulus spending, the increased loans, and the increased steel industry, which has been driving the iron ore imports. What we've also been seeing um, are coal imports going into China, increased coal imports going into India, as well as Japan. So we're now starting to see just the beginnings of, of those recoveries, and we think towards the end of the year, you'll start to see the iron ore import numbers increase as well. What, what kind of growth rates do you want to see out of China and India to to sort of hold up your industry. I mean, you've got to see some pretty serious growth there, I'm assuming. Well, we already have some pretty, some pretty uh, serious yeah, clearly, growth in clearly, China. You're saying right. those I mean, numbers are different than the kind of numbers we're yeah. used to talking about here. Yeah, I mean, the other, the other fact that you have to, to keep in mind in China is not only have you had um, demand really pick up, but you've had a, a somewhat of an arbitrage between imported iron ore and domestic iron ore. And here we see uh, Chinese imports here, obviously a much uh, steeper climb than, well, we see declines in, in the EU and the U.S. Right, absolutely. I mean, you can see on the on the bottom part of that chart, the EU and, and Japan, which traditionally have been base level demand economies, were off 25 to 30 percent. We mm. haven't seen the recovery quite yet in, in those. How much leverage leverage do you have with rates? I mean, we know they've come down dramatically, but how much leverage do you have at this point? Well, again, it, it's it, it you know it changes weekly, and that's why you see the fluctuations in the BDI. To me, that says a lot of volatility still out there. Absolutely, and we've we've always had a lot of volatility in the BDI, um, mm. even when everything was running on on all cylinders. But now that the now that the dry bulk industry and the recovery is really China centric, you're going to see even more volatility. All right, hey John, thank you so much for joining us today.
Uh, John Wobensmith there, Chief Financial Officer at Genco Shipping.